Welcome to a special edition of Meet the Leaders. I'm Dara Wells, and we are coming to you from the Capitol Building in Charleston, West Virginia, and we are thrilled to have the Senate President with us. He is Mitch Carmichael, of course. Welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to be with you, Dara. Well, it's nice to have you as well, Mitch, and there is much to talk about, not much time, so let's get right to it. Mm -hmm. You are about to enter a new session. What is high on the priority list for you? Well, we always approach each legislative session with sort of an optimism and a hope for turning this state of West Virginia into the most prosperous, best place in America to live, work, and raise a family. We've been able to do a lot of that through our uh, efforts to revitalize the economy in our state. We have turned a massive deficit, a historic deficit in our state, into a massive surplus. We have raised uh, the uh, job level and the wage rates in our state of perhaps as much as any state in America. And we've reduced our unemployment rate significantly. So we have much more to do, but our entire focus is an economic focus of jobs, hope, growth, and opportunity. To what do you attribute the turnaround? It's Frankly, it's good fiscal discipline, good fiscal management, the efforts of uh, the national administration. For years, we've had the boot of the federal government on our neck uh, as it relates to our coal industry. Mm -hmm. So we have seen our extractive industries begin to prosper again, the oil and gas industry, the coal industry. But we've also made significant regulatory changes, civil justice reforms, education reforms, and tax reforms that have put West Virginia on a trajectory of growth and jobs, and as a result, frankly, what we're seeing in some instances is that uh, employers can't find enough qualified workers to do the jobs in West Virginia. So we've gone from uh, having too few jobs mm -hmm. to perhaps having not enough people to fill the jobs that we have. Isn't that an interesting dilemma? It's a great problem. It's a great have. problem to have, but then of course you get to the, to the matter of training. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have the people to fill those jobs? Are they going to be qualified to take the jobs? I'm so glad you asked about that because last year in the state senate we had what I consider one of the best proposals uh, to have been adopted through the Senate, didn't make it through the entire process, mm -hmm. but community incentivizing community and technical education in our state mm -hmm. to remove the financial barrier uh, for students and uh, high school students and those returning to the workforce that perhaps are displaced in their current line of employment to get jobs in the trades sector. For instance, we have so much needs for plumbers, electrician, yes. HVAC, welders. Right. These people can make six-figure salaries, have a great uh, income, have a great life, and contribute to uh, society. Would you talk about your background and how you got into politics and when? Well, yes. I, I was elected to the legislature in the 2000 uh, election cycle. Uh, and my father uh, had been a delegate uh, years before that, uh, back in the 60s, wow. and like early 70s. and. Uh, he instilled in all of us sort of a desire for public service. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell you from a uh, personal perspective, this is public service. It's uh, <laughs> you know, people that want to say you, you make any money doing this. Yeah, you, you don't know. get rich doing no, this. You, it no. costs you money. But yeah. it is rewarding in the mm -hmm. fact that you feel like you're making a difference in the lives of the people of West Virginia. And, you know, the good Lord knows that we've needed it in our state. We've needed a revitalization, a turn in our economy, and uh, I feel, I really feel that we're getting it. So, Mitch, you've been through a lot of cycles. If mm -hmm. you were here since 2000... I've been, let me just there, be clear, I've been ahead. Senate President for two years, uh, for only two years. I've only been in the Senate four years, so... Uh, um, not that long in the Senate, but... Uh, right, but, but involved in public service. Mm -hmm. So you've seen a lot of um, administration changes. Um, d what is your feeling about the current working uh, situation? And I'm, I, I guess yeah. I'm talking about bipartisanship because we're not seeing a whole lot of it in a lot of legislatures, not to mention the uh, country's, the nation's capital. Yeah, I, I tell you, when I... Uh, I think everyone realizes that elections are based upon... Uh, ideological, philosophical differences. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, when a state or a country or a municipality, for that matter, elects uh, senators or people to represent them, right. yeah, there's an ideological uh, divide there. But when we come together in this body, particularly in any new legislative session, we should put aside absolutely the partisan labels and work for what's good for all of West Virginia. And I, I feel that we did, just like I mentioned, our community and technical college bill, it passed the Senate 34 to nothing. 
complete bipartisan that, That's support. pretty astonishing, yes, really. Because it was good for all of West Virginia. Right, now, right. Uh, I really want to build the momentum for that program again this year. Uh, perhaps the House of Delegates can see the wisdom of it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you talk about your leadership team? You, mm -hmm. You've made some selections uh, for the people that you want working uh, with you. Yes. Uh, the, the premier role in the uh, uh, other than well, I've selected Senator Tom Takubo, Senator Dr. Tom Takubo, to be the majority leader. Whom we've met, we've interviewed actually on this program. Terrific guy. Yeah. And he absolutely is committed to, one of the reasons he was selected is because of his ability to work across the aisle, to meet people in the middle, and to uh, find uh, solutions to problems, not just ideological divides. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Senator Takubo has already expressed his interest to be uh, uh, you know, sort of a bipartisan majority leader. And then in, in our other significant roles, one of them I really want to talk about, and I, frankly, breaking news here, this is uh, Senator uh, Patricia Rucker will be the education chair. And she is a, uh, a legal immigrant from Venezuela, wow. fled socialism, mm -hmm. uh, has taught in the public school systems, and is uh, dedicated to moving this education environment we have in West Virginia to a higher level. And uh, I think people are going to really, while they, uh, uh, you know, st the status quo is a powerful influencer yes, in this place. Yes, it is. But she is an advocate for change, and uh, I think it'll be great. And she'll she'll do whatever's best for the education community in West Virginia. Where do you think the uh, legislature has maybe fallen a bit short, and where do you hope they improve this coming session? Well, uh, I think always that there's uh, goals that you don't obtain, yes. uh, and uh, there's so much more. You, there, we have a 60-day legislative session, so you have to prioritize. Right. One of the areas that I would really like to see us focus upon is uh, regulatory reform. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that in West Virginia, we have been ranked as the most onerous, burdensome regulatory climate in America. Really? And so we need to go through and uh, streamline our regulatory uh, hurdles that, uh, you know, put barriers in front of job creators in our state. Um, and so we're, we're focused on doing that. Uh, we want tax reform desperately in our state. We have um, one of the most, uh, the, uh, one of the taxes that we have in our state that has been identified uh, nationwide as the biggest job killing tax that we have is this uh, personal property tax on business inventory and equipment. Right, we've heard a lot about it actually since we've been here today. Yeah, well, I'm sure yes. because it has been the subject of 30 years worth of studies mm -hmm. around here. Mm -hmm. And uh, But there's never been the political will to really, or the solutions in place that create the climate that allows it to pass. Is there now? Yeah, I, I, I still think it's a struggle because mm -hmm. that tax helps uh, counties fund their school system. Right. So, and, uh, you know, say at the outset, we must find a way to replace that revenue stream for the counties. Uh, by the same token, though, we cannot continue to tax the very capital equipment investment that creates the jobs and opportunity for our state. So, um, we're committed to doing, uh, you know, turning over every stone to find a way to get rid of that. I tax. believe you will. Yeah. You know, I wish we had more time. We do not. Senator Carmichael, it has been a real pleasure to meet you, well, and you. congratulations on uh, the team in place, and, and good luck in the coming sessions. That's great. Thank you thank so you much. Very much. Uh -huh. And thank you for joining us here on Meet the Leaders. I'm Dara Wells. We've come to you from Charleston, West Virginia. We're so happy you joined us.